Hello everyone, thanks so much for coming to my talk. Today I'm happy to present Big Mac, a new security policy analysis framework for Android firmware. The Android OS today has a lot of attack surface, whether it's via local applications, websites, over the air threats such as via Wi Fi or Bluetooth, or even physical attacks via USB. There are a lot of avenues attackers can use to, to compromise the system. There have been plenty of high impact bugs in the past, one of which was libstagefright, which is a remotely triggerable MMS message, uh, a USB privilege escalation, and even a binder use after free vulnerability, which was triggerable from local application. So Android does its best to defend against these kinds of attacks using a large combination of security mechanisms, three of which are Linux DAC, Linux capabilities, and SE Linux, also known as SE Android. This is a mandatory access control policy. And these three together formulate much of what Android security policy is. There are two others which we won't be covering in this talk. Well, in fact, we'll be focusing on these first three and how they interact together. The security policies for Android are spread out all over the entire system, on labels on files, within files, and within processes. The init process is responsible for loading the Mac policy into the kernel, booting up the system, and maintaining uh, security for properties and other files in the system. Its subprocesses, one of which is uEventD, assigns DAC policies to slash dev files, spawns, uh, also spawns Zygote, which is managing all the applications on the system, which further spawns system server, which has its own policy files, and then also service manager, which manages native daemons. So all these together are a big part of Android security policy, but as an analyst, it's hard to reason about what the actualized security policy is because it's so spread out and across many different systems. So this is where Big Mac comes in. What Big Mac does is it operates off of Android firmware directly, and it extracts the core file systems and then the files within them. From here, it extracts the labels on these files. These include the DAC, CAP, and MAC labels, which allows you to build, rebuild the graph and the interactions between different processes and objects on the system. This is helped out by the SC Linux policy, which is a type graph, which allows us to understand the allowed relationships between different parts and different components on the system. But, but this, is too, uh, this is too coarse for us. We need to get more fine grained. So we start to instantiate the graph into more recognizable objects like processes, files, and IPCs. From here, we fully instantiate this policy graph and inject it into our Big Mac query engine, which allows us to generate attack graphs, which allows us to understand the relationships between different components and understand how an attacker would privilege, escalation, privilege escalate between different components. So building an attack graph is composed of many different steps, starting with the SE Linux policy and the backing files which we extracted. This allows us to create a subject graph which is a very coarse-grained graph linking all the possible subjects in the system. This gives us a list of subjects, but we quickly translate this into a data flow graph, which instead of uh, having a very fine-grained understanding of the edges between subjects, boils it down to a simple read-write relationship, which matches our privilege escalation model pretty well. This also then gives us a more fine-grained list of objects, which are not just subjects. We can then start to differentiate these, these types. In parallel, we recover a process tree, which has a hierarchy of all possible processes in the system, and this gives us a list of all possible processes. In parallel to this, we then flatten the data flow graph even further, and finally overlay the process tree and flat data flow graph together into a fully instantiated attack graph. But there's an issue. Because we're starting from static firmware, which enables us to highly, have a highly scalable approach, not requiring physical devices or even the ability to root a phone, uh, there's a main problem. We don't know what processes would be running on the firmware. And we need to know this to be able to understand how the system policy would apply to them. This really means we need to know the processes that would be running and then their permissions, so their credentials at runtime. So can we recover these processes just from firmware alone? Well, we can't. And we do that through a partial emulation slash simulation of Android's boot. Luckily, Android's boot process is well specified the, by the platform and starts from these inner RC files, which we talked about earlier. 
These allow for uh, credentials to be explicitly assigned to services during the boot process, and even boot time changes to the file system, such as new files, which wouldn't exist in the static firmware alone. And without incorporating or simulating this Android boot process, we wouldn't know what processes would possibly be started during a, a, if, as if they were to be on a real phone, and our cross-vendor analysis wouldn't really scale anymore. So how do we evaluate Big Mac? Well, it's composed of two parts. The ground truth evaluation to make sure that we're doing an accurate job of doing this recovery. And the second is actually using Big Mac to do some case studies on the graph itself. So for the ground truth, we first look at all the files that we recovered from both physical devices, which we did have root on, and then the corresponding firmware images, which we got uh, off online sources. We then compared all the files that we got and then determined which ones we got right. And in this case, we were able to get over 98% of the files right just from static firmware alone. And this is really good because it means that not only is Big Mac able to use just firmware alone to have a, a good, accurate representation, uh, it means we can scale beyond physical devices and even beyond devices which you may not be able to get root on to do this ground truth evaluation at all. The second part of the ground truth is actually looking at the processes that we recovered. On the left is processes recovered by Big Mac and the split and on the right is the actual device processes. Big Mac is prim primarily focused on native daemons. So there's a lot of missing application processes, but our primary focus is on native daemons and the three Mac, DAC, and CAP policies, which mostly apply to them. But in this case, we're able to achieve over 75% accuracy just from this uh, boot time simulation. So actually using Big Mac, to actually do so, we developed a query interface in Prolog, which allows us to traverse the graph with a custom graph traversal algorithm, mainly taking into account our four, uh, three security policies and a fourth called the external attack surface. So these four policies on the left here are different, um, starting with the MAC policy, which is then applied, uh, uh, the DAC policy is applied to that, and then followed by the CAP policy, which is applied to those two. So each uh, application of a different security policy further refines the paths returned and allows you to get a more fine-grained understanding of the re relationships between starting nodes and target nodes and then the paths between them, which helps you get an idea of what things can talk to each other on a real system, possibly indicating a possible privilege escalation uh, avenue. As a case study, we used our query interface on a 1.3 million and around 2 million uh, edge graph for a Samsung S8 Plus image and LG G7 image, respectively. One thing I'd like to highlight is that this layered path reduction that we get from Big Mac is very important to our approach. By just using the Mac policy alone, if we're determining the path between untrusted app and media server, we re are returned over 102,000 paths uh, with length four. But once we apply the DAC policy, this quickly filters down the number of paths returned by 20x. So what this is really demonstrating is that work that is only relying on the MAC policy to determine if something is secure or well-formulated policy-wise is not going to be very uh, uh, accurate. It's going to be over-approximate. And in fact, we, we really demonstrate here that you need the MAC, DAC, and even further security policies to really be able to do this kind of work. One cool thing we can do with Big Mac is understand the process strength. So for the two images we analyze, on the right are the top three processes and their strength, which means how many things they can write to, this includes files and IPCs, pretty much means how much write strength they have on the system. And what this really highlights is that uh, system server, which is uh, uh, largely interacting with applications, is very powerful in itself. So if there were to be any bug in system server, which is a monolith, it could be compromised and be able to use the compromised further parts of the system, which may implicitly trust it. Um, so our recommendation based off this is that system servers should be refactored out of a model of form and take an approach that was uh, done to media server, which actually broke that up into separate processes as well, because it's almost too powerful. Another thing we did with Big Mac is we were able to analyze a privilege escalation. So this privilege escalation was uh, allowed an attacker to uh, compromise the Vol-D process, allowing to mount arbitrary files on the system, effectively compromising it completely, because Vol-D is, is within the TCB of the Android system. And the attacker was able to use Zygote as a starting node, and then 
use this uh, Valdi P trace edge to actually compromise Valdi by crashing itself and, and transitioning to the crash stump um, label uh, process. So uh, this was well known. We use Big Mac to find this, and additionally, we use Big Mac with the second query to actually determine that not only was Zygote a good starting node, but there were 22 other good starting nodes that have could have been compromised instead to allow for the same privilege escalation. So Big Mac is not only able to find these unintended edges between processes, it's able to triage existing vulnerabilities and help understand, help the uh, policy writers understand the true impact of them. So in conclusion, we created Big Mac, one of the most fine-grained policy analysis frameworks for Android devices today, and we're covering a system security state from static firmware alone. Big Mac surpasses previous Mac-only policy analysis approaches through its layered path reduction, which improves analysis results and allows us to discard impossible runtime paths. And we highlight Big Mac's abil uh, ability to, uh, to investigate privilege escalation paths and also examine the strength of processes along with other things which you can read in our paper. We have the source code uh, below, and uh, thanks so much for attending the talk.